A 46-year-old woman brought to the emergency department with complaint of one day of severe epigastric abdominal pain radiating to her back. She noticed several episodes of nausea and vomiting over this period of time. She has experienced slighter pain in the past, especially after heavy meals, but it always went away after 3-4 to four hours. But this time the pain was severe and intolerable and didn't improve, so her family brought her to the emergency department. She has no medical history and takes no medication. She denies history of alcohol consumption or smoking. She is married and has two children. On physical examination, she is diaphoretic, restless, and moving uncomfortably on the stretcher. But she is alert and can talk to the physician. The sclera of each eye is ecteric. Her lungs expand normally and it is clear on auscultation. The abdomen is soft with no distension but has tenderness on palpitation in epigastric area and right upper quadrant. She has normal blood pressure, normal body temperature and she is tachycardic with a heart rate of 108 beats per minute. Their respiratory rate is 24 breaths per minute. There is no significant point else on the examination. Now imagine you are the resident physician in the emergency department and need to come up with a plan to treat this patient. So it is time to answer these questions. First, what is the differential diagnosis? Second, which laboratory test do you order? Three, what is your final diagnosis? Based on lab test result which we will show you in the video. And what is your next diagnostic step? We suggest you to answer these questions first, then keep on watching the rest of the video to compare your management plan with the final answer. It might be a better way to learning. Differential diagnosis can be any disease that presents with epigastric pain. Once we have written down all possible causes of epigastric pain, we would differentiate them based on the clinical features and laboratory studies. So the following diseases can be considered as differential diagnosis. Peptic ulcer disease, acute pancreatitis, cholangitis, cholecystitis, intestinal abstraction, mesenteric ischemia, and hepatitis. Now it is time to order the laboratory test based on the most likely diagnosis in the list. In case of acute symptoms, we should order those tests which enable us to find a cause within a short period of time. Acute pancreatitis and intestinal abstraction have acute manifestation, so it is better to order laboratory tests or imaging methods to assess these two disorders first. Serum amylase and serum lipase have high sensitivity for acute pancreatitis. They usually rise 6 to 12 hours after the onset of acute pancreatitis. Liver enzymes Complete blood count because both intestinal abstraction and pancreatitis can lead to leukocytosis. And abdominal radiography is a great choice to find out if there is abstraction in intestine. Electrolytes, calcium, and albumin should be obtained to rule out other possible causes. Okay, after a while you have received the laboratory results. Amylase level is 1320 unit per liter. Lipase level is 544 unit per liter. Total bilirubin is 8.3 gram per deciliter. Alkaline phosphatase level is 234 unit per liter. ALT is 98 units per liter. AST is 81 units per liter. Leukocyte count is 60,800 per millimeter. And abdominal x ray shows a non specific gas pattern and no sign of pneumoperitoneum or intestinal abstraction. Abdominal pain especially in the epigastric area is the cardinal symptom of acute pancreatitis that is usually radiates to the back. The pain often relieved by bending forward or sitting up. Fatty foods or heavy meal exacerbate the pain and patient may experience nausea or vomiting after meals. Presence of at least 12 of the following criteria requires for the definite diagnosis of acute pancreatitis. First is severe epigastric pain that is present in this patient. Second is elevation in serum lipase or amylase level three times greater than the upper limit. And characteristic findings on imaging. 
The patient in our case meets the two first criteria, so acute pancreatitis is definitively diagnosed. And suitable imaging must be done to find out the exact cause of the pancreatitis. Computer tomographic imaging or serious scan of the abdomen is highly sensitive for detecting gallstones and inflammatory change in patients with pancreatitis. So the next diagnostic step is abdominal CT scan. Pancreatitis is caused by several factors. The most common etiology is gallstone, that is accounting for about half of the cases. Other common etiologies are alcohol consumption, hypertriglyceridemia or hypercalcemia, genetic factors, infections, pancreatic trauma, either blunt or penetrating, and some special medications. Treatment of acute pancreatitis is supportive and includes fluid therapy, pain control, and nutritional support. The hydration rate should be 5 to 10 ml per kg per hour of a crystalloid solution, such as lactate ringer or normal saline. If the patient has any sign of dehydration, you can even increase the rate of fluid resuscitation more than this. Opioids can be used as the first choice of painkillers because they are either safe and effective. Morphine and fentanyl may be used in this situation. Keep it in the mind that the patient should be monitored in the first 24 to 48 hours for the vital signs, electrolyte serum level, and urine output. When the pain reduced significantly and bowel sounds was normal, oral clear liquid can be started instead of intravenous therapy. Antibiotics need to be prescribed when the cause of pancreatitis is acute cholecystitis and the cholecystectomy must be done within 48 to 72 hours.